Hi, this is Linda Burton. And this is Leslie. With Let's Talk. Hey, Linda, how are you doing today? I am doing good, Leslie. What's going on? You know, I want to share something with you that happened to me today. I was on my way to church. And as I was driving, this lady or this car sped out and got on the other side of the road. And while she, the person was driving, the car, she lost control. And oh. it sped off to the side of the road, went down in a ditch, and I think it almost hit like a tree. And so naturally, when I saw that, my immediate reaction was just to pray. So I prayed for the person who was in the car. And I saw that there was no like serious damage. So I pulled over, I pulled over to call 911. Mm -hmm. And as I did that, I saw cars just drive on, slow down and drive, slow down and drive, slow down and drive. So I waited and I reported the incident to the dispatcher and they said they'll be right there. So while I was waiting for the dispatch to, you know, come on, to send the ambulance down, I got out the car and I saw a lady with two children. One little boy hopped out the car and got into another car, which was weird, but I didn't think anything about it. And then the lady was holding a little girl. Like she might've been maybe two or three. So I got out the car. I was like, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? She was like, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. I said, I just want you to know I called, you know, 911 and someone's on their way. So just relax. She said, thank you. Thank you. And I proceeded to get back in my car and I said, no, let me just wait. And as I was waiting, um, cars would just drive up and drive on, drive up and drive on, drive up and drive on. And then some cars just sped on by. So finally, I got back out the car and um, she said, I just talked to my husband. He's on his way. And I was like, okay, great. I said, you know what? I'm going to wait until your husband comes. I'm going to wait till someone comes. I don't want to leave you. She was like, thank you. And then I got out again, got out the car and I went towards her and I said, can I pray for you? And I prayed for her. She let me pray for her. And um, then I saw that they were shivering because it's cold here. So I said, do you want to come wait in my car because it's cold? She said, oh, she motioned to her daughter. She said, do you want to wait in the car? And she said, yes. Yeah. So put her in the car. She stood at the door, the passenger side. I turned the heat up so she can warm up a little bit. And she was like, well, where were you on your way to? I said, I'm on, I'm on my way actually on the church. And she said, oh, wow, fancy that. And I said, where were you on your way to? She said, I'm going home. We just got back in town. We flew in from the airport. Um, from Norfolk. And so we had small talk. But just the thought, Linda, all these cars were just speeding on. Nobody stopped. Nobody stopped, but what, maybe two cars. And it had to have been about eight or nine cars that drove past us. Mm -hmm. And eventually her husband did come. I stayed in the car and waited. You know, she got her daughter, got the daughter out. Her husband came. And so she said, bye. And I said, bye. Um, but I was shocked. I was shocked that nobody stopped. Here's a lady with a toddler in her arms. Nobody stopped, Linda. That was so disheartening because my first inclination is when you see someone hurt, don't you stop to find out if they're okay? Yeah. And then my mind went to the story in the Bible about the Good Samaritan. And I'm not tooting my own horn or anything like that. But just to prove a point that in that story, it talked about the man who was beaten up by some thieves. And these different types of people walked past them. Until finally one person stopped, cleaned them up, took them to a den and said, I'll pay for this person until he gets better. Mm -hmm. And... Jesus made a point about when you see someone in need, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to stop. We're supposed to help if it's in our heart. But now everybody is in such a rush, 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 or, you know, got to go somewhere. I got something on my mind. Oh, I got, I'm not going to stop because I might be in danger too. Yeah, naturally I was a little, my first thought was, is this person okay? My second thought was, uh-oh, I'm by myself too, mm -hmm. you know? But that went out the window. So what do you think, Linda, about that? What are your thoughts? I, it, what you just clarified is kind of what I was thinking. Like, 
if it was a man, would you still, I mean, you, you could still stop, but would you let him go in your car? You know what I mean? Like, because at the same time, we do have to protect ourselves, And in the same mm-hmm. time, we're not in the world that, like, it used to be before I was born, I guess, when you can unlock the door, you know, yeah. like actually, yeah, keep the door unlocked and different yeah. things like that. And, and a closed door means do not, you, you feel safe. You don't have yeah. to lock it or anything. Yeah. And will it made a difference of the time of day? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. everything plays a part of that. Yeah. Now, um, you're right. You're right. I, I do see stuff and I do call 911 and I do wait, but I, because of the world we live in now, if they look safe, I stay in my car and wait. Or mm-hmm. I'll go do whatever I need to do and come back and make sure they're okay. Or I'll call you, and I don't know if people know this, I call 911 back and ask how, you know, like what's, going on yeah um so there's different ways because of the different situations of what's going yes. on it's at yeah. night it's you know just yeah. um that's you know just different things that's going on because it's not i think some of us do have a good a heart but it's just the world we live in now or just even the stuff that we've been through of um being hurt by someone and not wanting to put their self back in that situation again. So your guard is up and it's not that you don't care, is that. So um, I think certain people are good Samaritans that just because they don't stop that, you know what I mean? Like, doesn't mean they're not because you don't know if they still didn't call 911 or they realize she's okay or they realize you're there with her. You know what I mean? So she wasn't yeah. just a single, so you really, it's, it's kind of hard. And you know me, I'm yeah. an overthinker. So I'm thinking like all this other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the same time. So it doesn't make it really fair um, to just say it that, you know, say it that way. But I really do see what you're saying of a good Samaritan. What does that look not, like now? What is expected of a person? Like what is the limit of that? I think that's the real issue because um, if she looks okay and for whatever reason you don't feel safe, but you still call it 911 and you yeah. still stop and wait for, you know what I mean? Like just this, the different situations yeah, of yeah. what's going on. So that's I think true. that um, I know one of the things um, to me, um, even when I hear paramed- paramedics, I'm sorry, when I hear paramedics and different things, to me, it just makes me think like, let, let's pray for that person. I always yeah. stop, you know, cause I had that happen before of waiting for a paramedic and I feel like it's taking forever. Yeah. And that one second or, or five extra seconds of them waiting for you to slowly move over or, you know what I mean? Like trying to keep your speed and not like get out their way is yeah. somebody's life of not having a breath to breathe or in so much pain or a situation that could be life and death. So um, a good Samaritan can even be somebody just hearing it, pulling over, praying and staying out the way. Another Samaritan can be fresh if they have the skills of a doctor or someone that has, you know, CPR training and different things like that is going to the situation. So I don't think um, a good Samaritan is always just be, um, a visible thing, like you being next to her. It could be somebody just praying and moving out the way or calling 911, different things like that. So um, I learned a long time ago we have to think bigger than what's in the box of, of what we think something is because the world is so much bigger now. So I, I know that lady appreciate you and you did more. Um, and I, it makes me curious, like if you didn't stay, well, anybody what would have anybody else pulled over and stay with you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But because you were there, they're like, oh, she's, she's taken care of now. She's okay now. Yeah. And you're right. And then I'm thinking too, just the fact that here, this lady trusted me to put her daughter in my car, Mm. you know, either she could have been in shock still of what happened and not thinking clearly, but, or she just saw something different on me that she felt she could do that. 
you know, she was outside. Her daughter was in the passenger seat. Now the door was open, but still her daughter was in my car. Yeah. So, you know, you're right, Linda, our world is different. And back in the day, like 900 years ago, maybe it would have been, <laughs> maybe the response <laughs> might not have been so the way it is now, but um, you're right. We do have to be precautionary in our approaches to things. And, and if it was at night, would I had stayed? Probably not. I would have called and probably moved up a little further. Um, if it was a man, I definitely wouldn't have gotten out of my car, you know, so you never know. Factors, there are a lot of factors concerning any situation. Um, if I was by myself and this lady was by herself, I probably would have still acted like this, but maybe the time of day would have still determined my response. You know, if it was at nighttime, I'd still would be, you know, cautionary in how I approached it. But you're right. A, a, a good Samaritan can be a lot of different things. You don't necessarily have to physically do some things. It could be something as simple as, a prayer, a phone call, you know, listening in, pulling over. So I think it's going back to the point that being a good Samaritan in life means considering others before yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I make some type of sacrifice, even if it is just calling, even if it is just moving out the way and slowing down your schedule, it sounds major, but you don't know how much that is to save someone's life or, or that, that, that um, situation of yeah. how that makes a difference. Because if five people do the exact same thing of just pulling over instead of, you know, the paramedics trying to go around or waiting, you don't know if that's five minutes without a breath or five minutes without, you know what I mean? The pain they're in or, or whatever. So I think that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. And a good Samaritan could be someone that takes the time to wait. I'm just thinking, since we're on this traffic top topic, like I, I heard a story of about a man who um, was behind a car and, you know, it was a two lane highway. And because they did not wait, they went around the car that was waiting because there was traffic, you know, turning the opposite direction. They did not wait. They got around the car and head on collision because they didn't wait. Oh. So wait, yeah, that's a good Samaritan. Again, thinking about other people, where you have to go is may not be that important at that time. Just wait. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't want to end on a doom and gloom note. But I do want to say that yeah, let's be good Samaritans in life. Let's think about others. Let's do for other people in ways that may not be um, recognizable. But when you put other people before yourself, you've made a better choice in yeah. a lot of ways, you know. That's good. Be more aware of your surroundings and what's going on and what you can and can't do. But you have to be safe yourself. Use wisdom. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I like that. And it's mm -hmm. weird. Sometimes we don't even see the outcome of it, of you know, how just doing that made a difference. Just how by pulling over as soon as you hear a fire truck or something compared to, oh, they're like a block behind me. Let me wait. Yeah. Uh, you know, just pulling it. You don't know how much that makes a difference for that driver to get where they're going. You know what I mean? Of breaking less and different things like that. Or who's following your need. So. That's right. That's right. That's good, Linda. Well, you know, I think this was a good topic and I always like to end on a good note. I always like to end on a high note. And, you know, if you like what you heard, and I know you did, Linda liked it. I liked it. I absolutely love the opportunity to be a blessing in someone's life today. And that made a, made a huge difference in my day. If you liked it, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel. We want to get this message out to as many people as we can because we know that there are people on the other side that want to hear, that need to hear and appreciate some stories, some incidences, some experiences that we all have had because this is what it's all about. It's about life's lessons. And our lesson today was being a good Samaritan. And it's about laughter. Don't forget to laugh. Don't forget to take the time to laugh and enjoy life. And it's about love because the ultimate goal is to what? Make relationships that last. Until next time.
Bye. Bye.